I talked about Stoic philosophy at the beginning. And you might have heard a few of those Stoic philosophers, the names of those Stoic philosophers. Three names you really have to keep in mind. And these were the Roman guys, Roman Stoic philosophy. Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius. Seneca was a very rich business guy, very powerful guy. He was probably the Warren Buffett of the Roman times, but he was a Stoic. And you can read, and he was a playwright, and he was a beautiful writer. And you can read his, his, the stuff that he wrote, at the, and it's very clear. I mean, it's, very, um, it's, a, it's got a very good style, very accessible uh, to read. Uh, Seneca is a beautiful writer. Then Epictetus is this guy. I'll come to this. Uh, actually, let me just talk about Epictetus. And, and Epictetus is, is kind of the theoretician of the Stoic philosophy. He was a slave before, so it's the contrary to the Warren Buffett, to the Seneca of the Roman times. He was a slave and opened up a school for, philosophy, for Stoic philosophy. Um, and he is a theoretician. And then you have Marcus Aurelius, and Marcus Aurelius was an emperor. So you see Stoic philosophy really applies to very powerful people, business guys, entrepreneurs, and slaves through all the classes. So this guy came up with a solution to this habituation issue, Epictetus. And, uh, and the solution is, is this. Instead of thinking about all the things you don't yet have, consider how much you'd miss the things you do have if you didn't have them any longer. So instead of thinking, oh, I would, I'd love to have that Porsche, or I'd love to have that bigger house with the two more rooms, or I'd love to have this and this. Think about what you already have, then kind of mentally subtract that you already have it, and then once you look around your life, you realize you have so much already. And this is called mental subtraction. This is one of those 50 tools. This is quite effective so you don't fall into the trap of habituation of all the stuff you have. We can do a little exercise together, a very small little exercise. Um, if you close your eyes for a moment and just imagine that you have lost your right arm, just imagine how it would feel. You know, how would you type on the computer? How would you drive your car? How would you hug somebody? How, how would that feel? How would you eat? Just, just kind of feel how this would feel. And now, just imagine you also lost your left arm. How would that feel now? You know, how would you hug somebody? How would you, how would you navigate the world? Could you even write? Uh, could you type? No, you couldn't type. Could you paint? No, it doesn't really work. And now, imagine that you also lost your eyesight. You're blind. You're not going to see any more landscape. You're not going to see the, uh, the, the face of your friend, of your girlfriend, of your husband, wife, of your children. Uh, you're not going to see the paintings that are in the museum. Just imagine how this feels. And now you open up your eyes again. And look around. And you have your arms. And you have your eyesight. And it's, it's just, it feels great, doesn't it? And it gives you a bump in happiness, in joy, by realizing I have already so much. And this is the effect of mental subtraction. It's almost like a ball, a ball that you press on the water and then you let it go and it jumps back up. It gives you a bump of happiness. And, that's, and that is a mental attitude or that is a mental tool that you can use to appreciate what you already have. And we already have so much in our lives that we don't need the other portion, we don't need that extra gadget anymore. We already have so much. Thank you.